There was a time when public swimming pools would abruptly close, schools shut their doors, and theaters would darken their marquees. All it took was an outbreak of polio. Polio was a very frightening disease. Kids that got infected with the virus could become totally paralyzed, have to go into iron lungs, not be able to breathe on their own, and could die from the disease. In the first half of the 20th century, few measures were considered too extreme to stop the spread of a virus that killed people and permanently paralyzed others, all in a seemingly random way. Children were hit the hardest, stoking widespread fear. People asked, can't anyone stop this? Relief came in 1955 with the first safe, effective vaccine. It was created by researcher Jonas Salk, who was born on October 28, 1914. It's an anniversary that's being celebrated around the world. He had the stature of Mahatma Gandhi. Jonas Salk was born in New York City. He was the son of garment workers. He came from a uh, very moral Jewish family. He was uh, well aware of the social implications of his work and also of uh, social responsibilities. And he wanted to be a scientist in order to make this a better world. Salk grew up to become a medical researcher specializing in infectious diseases. He joined the fight against polio where he took an unusual approach to the problem. Jonas had the idea that you could take a killed virus, that is a virus that had been inactivated, that could not divide and could not spread, therefore would be inherently safer, and that might be a form of vaccine. People were desperate for help. The fear and hopelessness were palpable. And in 1952, literally 50,000 children were infected with the virus. It also infected adults. No one was protected. That strikes fear in families. Victory came in 1955, when it was announced that Salk's vaccine had proved to be safe and effective in field tests, tests that included his own family. The first time that we had injections of the polio vaccine was in our kitchen. Um, my father brought the material home, boiled the needles and the syringes on the stovetop, and then we were lined up to get shots. Now, I hated shots. I would do my best to avoid them. The thing that struck me that morning and why I'll never forget it is that it didn't hurt. Salk was only 40 when his vaccine was judged to be safe. He turned his attention to create an institute that would focus not only on biology, but also on the human condition. He was a dreamer and uh, he said that he studied medicine, but he didn't want to be a doctor. He wanted to help humankind, not just uh, help people one at a time. Salk quickly drew in some of the best minds in science, helping San Diego become a research mecca. This was a great coup for La Jolla to have Jonas Salk and a number of eminent scientists come to the Salk Institute and set up camp on the Mesa. It was big for several reasons. The UCSD was just beginning. So although the uh, Scripps Institution of Oceanography had quite a reputation, UCSD did not. So this was really planting the flag and for, for science and for innovation, it was uh, a great place to be. Today, the most visible part of Salk's legacy is the Institute, which researchers regard as one of the most beautiful, inspirational spots in science. The building draws things out of people and makes you feel that you can think in a bigger way. Um, every detail was thought through and it's a brilliant structure copied by many others. And the setting on the cliffs of La Jolla overlooking the vast Pacific is very ethereal into thinking big. You know how you go for walks to become contemplative. The Institute draws that out of people, and the people draw that out of you. He brought new ideas and new thinking, and maybe the last scientific person in the last hundred years that single-handedly took on a disease and basically cured it.